Welcome to Catholic Views. I'm your host, Renee Kranz. In studio with me today, I have three lovely gentlemen. This is, uh, we very rarely have three guests at one time, so this is going to be a little bit of a juggling act. But we have Christmas at the Cathedral coming up, so we wanted to bring in Mark Kazemius, Joe Obermuller, and Dan Goler to talk about uh, their roles in Christmas at the Cathedral, what to expect this year, and why anyone should come. Because people who have come know that this is a big deal. Right, Mark? Well, we hope so. Yeah, it's all in the Lord's <laughs> hands, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's titled Journey in Faith for a Reason yes, this year. Yes. It's a journey so, in faith, but it's, uh, it's worth it. It yeah. really is. It, uh, we've not had anybody say, I want my money back. No, no. Found. In fact, every time I talk to someone who's been to it, they're like, you haven't been yet? And I haven't been yet, which is terrible. And I mean to go every year, and maybe this will be the year. I think it was two years ago we were sick, and we had tickets, and then we had to give them up. So I was really bummed. Anyway, thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Um, I want to start by uh, having each of you just introduce yourself a little bit, and maybe how you're involved uh, in the in the production. So, Mark, sure. if you'd start. Sorry. Yeah, Mark can see Miss, and my day job is president of the Catholic Community Foundation for Eastern South Dakota, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been blessed to be the uh, part of the creation of Christmas at the Cathedral, the producer and director for all 26 years. Mm-hmm. Mark works really hard at this. Like he starts in the spring, putting the, the show together. Yeah, it's, in the winter, and yes. and the reason oh, yeah. why these two are here, and and also our fourth colleague Apollonia Davalos, yes. they're part of the creative team. So, as soon as Christmas at the Cathedral is over uh, in January, <laughs> we're evaluating, <laughs> processing, learning from it, and we're beginning to talk about themes for the next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Mark, you are from South Dakota originally, if I remember right. Uh, originally from lovely, Minnesota. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And your wife. And my wife's from New Hampshire. Yeah. And Jeannie. Yeah. Jeannie. I hear so many good things about Jeannie. I don't yeah. know if I've ever met her, but. Um, it's the best thing I ever did in my life, right? Uh, <laughs> That's without a doubt. good to hear. Yeah. Jeannie's She's smiling terrific. right now. <laughs> All right, Joe, how about you? All right. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Joe Obermuller. I, uh, my day job is uh, as Vice President of Academic Affairs at the University of Sioux Falls. Uh, I've been at USF for 10 years. I was previously an associate professor of theater and uh, got involved with Christmas at the Cathedral after seeing the production in 2018 when uh, my wife and I got to see the performance and we were just, we were bowled over by it. It was Mm -hmm. awesome. And I remember very vividly leaning over to Janet is my wife's name and, and after the performance was over and I was like, this was amazing. I mean, if I could be a part of this, it would just be awesome. And the Lord heard that request. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not five minutes later, uh, w- was talking to some friends who were involved in the production. And they said, hey, you should meet Mark and, and get connected. And then the next year, I got to play Isaiah in that particular performance. That was 2019. And so that's how I got involved. And it's been uh, it's just been a wonderful blessing in my life to be a part of the creative team and and uh, and now to once again take on the actor role. Right, right. Uh, Dan, how mm-hmm. about you? Jeez, <laughs> I met Mark just by accident. We met at a um, friend's home and uh, had dinner together and um, just hit it off really well. I got involved in writing some music for a production when Henry Charles Smith was still the music director. And then when Henry Charles uh, retired, um, Mark kind of brought me on board. And so I've been here ever since 2009. And what is your role with the production i'm the music director so my responsibility is to work with mark and the rest of the uh, creative team apollonia and joe to put together the show but also to help um, come up with selections and and options for music you know that we can utilize each year and then once we make the choices about the music we we want to utilize then i go ahead and work out the arrangements for the orchestra and the chorus and the guest stars that we have each year and then direct the show as well and if I remember right, sometimes you are also writing music. Quite a bit, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Yes. We, we sure u- you can't always find what you want. No, and even <laughs> if we do, you know, we find a lot of songs that we like, but they're not necessarily going to be available, um, and specifically available for to fit within the context of the cathedral show, right. which is a different kind of thing than, say, hearing it in an arena or yes. a concert hall. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. I do, <clears throat> I do have to point out, though, there are no accidents. So the oh, fact that <laughs> I met Joe, the fact that I met Dan and, and Apollonia, those it was all providential, all For meant sure. to be. And these are some of the most talented people in our region. And the fact that 
God's brought them together here in the cathedral to celebrate his incarnation every year. It's just yeah. phenomenal. Well, and Mark, I think one of your great gifts is that you are really able to pick out the talented people who uh, to work around you. And it, it just seems like you're really, really good at that. So I can imagine these guys were like, that was super easy to get in with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so this year... Um, as as many people know, most people should know, uh, our dear Bishop Swain, Bishop Paul Swain, passed away this past weekend. And Mark just informed me, I think it was yesterday, that the performances this year were going to be dedicated to Bishop Swain's memory. Yes. So can you talk about that a little bit, Mark? Yeah, Bishop Swain uh, had a huge impact on me personally, and I know uh, all of East River through mm-hmm. a lot of the things. You know, he'll definitely be known for the person who led the interior restoration of the cathedral uh, where we're performing Christmas at the cathedral but also uh, the Bishop Dudley Hospitality House the emergency yep. homeless shelter that we have um, the permanent monastery here mm-hmm. for the Adoration Sisters many amazing beautiful things that he did and um, you know Bishop had never been to South Dakota until <laughs> and then the Holy Father you know Pope Benedict you know called him and said I'd like you to be the bishop of Sioux Falls. And, He's like, where's oh, Sioux never Falls, been there. <laughs> So uh, the title of this year's concert is Journey of Faith, as I mentioned. Mm-hmm. And he took that journey of faith and came here. And within weeks of his being installed, it was mid-October. Oh. Um, this was two, three weeks later. I said, oh, Bishop, we need you to record this little welcome message. And oh, yeah, what's that about? He goes, well... It's going to be broadcast on 220 CBS affiliates across the country. <laughs> uh, millions of people are going to see this on Christmas Eve. And he Did he no- turn white? Because yeah, I, yeah, I can see Bishop oh, yeah. being like, whoa. He's a very shy guy. <laughs> yes. And uh, this was way out, outside of his comfort zone. Mm-hmm. But he accepted that, and then he came to his first concert. And he, uh, we, we asked if he would attend one concert each year uh, because it is televised and and it's a chance for him to meet a lot of people, and a lot of people get a chance to interact with him. Well, he came to all six, oh, wow. and uh, and all of them after, and in all, he came. I was adding him up. He came to seventy nine Christmas at the cathedral wow. concerts during his time because he wanted to be there. And he said, mm-hmm. you know, the Lord speaks to me in a different way with each concert. I get moved and touched in a different way, and and he was a very special part of yeah. the production. So we're. We miss him dearly, um, but we're we, we're excited to be able to dedicate this year's concerts to his memory. Yeah. So, um, Mark is is has assured me that probably both Dan and Joe have some good memories of Bishop Swain. Do either one of you want to share one? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, the the most vivid memory is Bishop Swain coming back into the green room prior to each performance and and praying for us. Mm-hmm. And I looked forward to this every night but the the night that that is clear to me and probably always will be was when my daughters were with me back there Mm. and at the time they were probably six and eight maybe years old and and bishop swain turned the corner to enter the room and he immediately saw my girls and walked right up to them I mean, it was just, it was the most amazing, I wish I could describe better the look on his face when he saw my girls there and he walked over to him and he blessed both of them. And there was just this, this intentionality toward uh, my daughters. And I just stood in awe watching this happen. And then he prayed for the group and it was a three second moment, but it was very impactful and very meaningful. And so I'll always remember that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Dan, did he take yours? <laughs> no, he didn't. I mean, I, I was just going to say, all of the time that Bishop spent with us, um, in the time praying with us before the performances and visiting with us around those performances were all memorable, and they were really encouraging to us. But I have kind of an interesting one. So it was actually before. We're walking through. It was one of those years where it was like negative something, and there's, you know, snow piled up everywhere in the streets and whatever and my wife's great aunt and uncle have been invited to come to the show and they're very elderly they were in their mid 80s at the time and um her great uncle had a hat that blew off his head and landed under um a car on the street Mm. and bishop was walking over from the bishop's residence over and he just like went right and like got right down (laughs) in his you know clothes all dressed up for the performance and whatever he got down on his knees under that car and grabbed that hat and gave it back to her great uncle and so i think that's a good to me that's the story for me 
that really embodies what Bishop Swain was about. He yeah. was really about service. Yes, I was going to say he was, he was a servant servants. leader. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, thanks for those. Um, anything else you want to include about that, Mark, before we move on to the performances? No, um, the only thing I'd add is we're going to also dedicate the broadcast okay. um, on Christmas in his memory as well. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so let's turn to uh, the actual performances and find out what we can expect this year. So, Mark, can you tell us a little bit about what the theme is um, and just what people will see when they're there? Yeah, <clears throat> for those who haven't been to Christmas at the cathedral, every year we have a the theme that mm -hmm. we pick. And what it is is just, just taking a sort of a magnifying glass or a spotlight and focusing on a particular aspect of the incarnation. It's a story that is just... I never get tired of thinking about <clears throat> and looking at, and there's so much to learn, and I feel like God has so much to teach us through it. So last year, <clears throat> excuse me, the focus was on Mary's perspective, mm -hmm. and it's the first-person perspective. And uh, the the actor at the time, actress uh, Apollonia Davalos, just did a fabulous job. And this year, it's going to be from Joseph's perspective. Okay. And, um, oh, my gosh, as we dug into it, being a father myself, blessed to be a father, I, I, I was just so uh, moved by the script, uh, it, which really is his story, um, and it's called Journey in Faith. It's not just uh, you know a, a pronoun, if you will, of uh, the name of a concert. It's really an imperative, and it's it's uh, each of us being called and challenged in a way to journey in faith. We've teased that a little bit as we've talked about Bishop Swain mm -hmm. journeying in faith and. Mm -hmm. And each of us, I was just out to see my daughter last week who has two children, a two-year-old and a four-month-old. And you can imagine there's some moments of being overwhelmed. And I, I put on one of the songs and just talked a little bit about Joseph's journey and how difficult it was at times. Joy-filled at times, mm -hmm. but challenging at times. And we both just had a good cry together, uh, <laughs> but lifted up and, and buoyed by our faith mm -hmm. and, and by knowing um, that we should not lose hope uh, that that God has got this he's, he's going to be there for us is with us all throughout the whole journey that sounds like a really interesting uh, way to look at it I know I don't know how you come up with these every year because it seems like they're different every year it seems like a very simple story so I'm really impressed that you can figure out a new angle to look at it from um, okay so Joe you've been uh, a part of several performances this is your fourth time is that right third time as third time the as actor. actor yeah okay yeah um which role are you playing i imagine joseph, joseph? okay indeed and why did you say yes to it this time he's my namesake how could i say <laughs> no? <laughs> no i uh no really it, it it's a easy choice i love being a part of the performance there's nothing like it there's nothing like performing in the cathedral there's nothing like listening to the music every single night. Um, I just like being with Mark and Dan, so anywhere they are, I want to be. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's really a great experience. And then this year in particular is really interesting to have this sort of sequel almost to last year's performance mm -hmm. where, uh, like Mark said, Apollonia did such a fabulous job embodying Mary and telling her story. And now we're, we're seeing us... A, 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 the other side of it right. we're seeing joseph's side right. and it was interesting to write this particular story because we don't know as much about joseph mm -hmm. and so uh through the creative process deciding when we were when we were going to start his story and how we were going to end his story and uh and that was all a really uh fun creative process for us and i won't give anything away about that but i you know it's kind of interesting to know that we did spend quite a bit of time figuring that out right and uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. How do you prepare for a role like this? Well, it requires a lot of dedicated, focused time to get the words into your brain. <laughs> and, uh, first things first. Huh? Yes. And then once that happens, then you're free to have fun and okay. to explore and and figure out a whole bunch of things about the character. And so uh, it. That process is long and hard, but it's so worth it. And I have to tell just really quickly uh, one story that I've just really appreciated so far with this process. Um, Joseph is actually, in some moments of the show, recalling the words of Isaiah. And in 2019, when I 
played Isaiah, I was speaking s- some of the same words uh, uh, 800 years prior. Sure. And so to be learning the same script <laughs> from Joseph's perspective has been extraordinary because it's all coming to be. This is a fulfillment of something that the prophets foretold that people were waiting for, and here it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so to, to be able to, to say these words from Joseph's perspective, to, to, to bring these, these characters that we know so well to life really brings the story uh, into an, an entirely new realm of understanding. And so that's yeah. been really fun. Does yeah. that impact your own faith? Absolutely. Yeah. In what yeah. way? Uh, putting scripture into your heart and mind like that, mm-hmm. I, I wish I could encourage, I, I would encourage everybody to do it, you know, yeah. um, mm-hmm. because you, I, I get to know scripture in a, in a very deep and personal way. Wow. And, and I hope that's what the performance does because so much of what these characters say is just straight out of scripture. Mm-hmm. And so it's seeing, it's seeing these people and these stories come to life and and so i hope that sort of transformation that i experience happens for the audience too right. and in fact that's my job as the actor to try to do that right so right um dan we talked mm-hmm. to you a little bit last year um about because it was the 25th anniversary and um we talked a little bit about writing and arranging so of course you work on all that piece can you describe how that works for you a bit and then how it's different maybe this year from last year or even each year how is it different for you and is there anything that stood out this year yeah i mean each year it's a different as mark said there's a different theme different Mm -hmm. story different way that we're telling the same christmas story so we sort of um reimagine it each year and so we need new music not just to express the perspective of the character but really in the way that we're looking at and as as, uh, joe pointed out digging into the theological richness Mm -hmm. of the story and what scriptures are we you know, sort of bringing to life and writing on people's hearts as they as they watch the show. And so every year I'm going through, I have a long list of Christmas music, and like right now I have two dozen titles under oh, wow. consideration for future shows and ideas and concepts. So that's kind of the cool thing. Like Joe said, I feel like for me it's an opportunity to grow in my faith and understanding, knowledge of Scripture. And the songs are powerful because, um, for example, oftentimes when I'm praying for uh, for other people, I'll think of a song right. and I'll think of a scripture and so I'll send the song or the scripture and Martin Luther said that when we sing we pray twice mm-hmm. which is kind of interesting yeah. there's something too of the way a song can encapsulate so much truth in a beautiful and powerful way mm-hmm. and so um, that's what we're looking for when we choose the music and then we just give it to the artist and the orchestra and the, and the chorus and we just give them an opportunity to share that with the audience and also in our own lives as we work on those arrangements as we prepare them in preparation rehearsal and then also when we do them in the performances as right well. I think a question I didn't ask you guys last year, how long do you rehearse before all of this comes together on performance nights? Because I, I don't see you rehearsing anywhere, obviously. You're not, it's not like you're rehearsing in the cathedral. So how much rehearsing is done? Not as much as we would like. So, <laughs> yeah, it's hard. We don't so, to, yeah, the chor- do it. <laughs> chorus only gets, the choir rehearses seven times. Oh, wow. That's on their it? own. On their own. That's it, yeah. And that's, you know, assuming they show they're up. Really, for they're really, they're really good choir. They are. They're so. very good, yeah. But they're volunteer chorus, but they're excellent. And so they rehearse seven times, five to seven times, depending on how frequently they show up to rehearsals. Mm-hmm. And then the week, of re- uh, the week of production starts on Tuesday night. So we get a Tuesday night rehearsal. Wednesday night is a full dress rehearsal with an audience that's and right. uh, members of the Bishop Dudley House mm-hmm. and Harmony and other places. And then six shows. So it's quick. That first night is the first time the orchestra is there, the chorus is there, the artists are there. I have an afternoon rehearsal for about 90 minutes with the two artists for the first time when they, you know, get in off the airplanes and come. And oh, boy. So it's it's rigorous, but... Um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Too. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's, a te- it's a testament to the professionalism <laughs> of the whole thing. Because, <laughs> and I got to say, it's a terrifying mm. uh, prospect <laughs> because the first time I'm rehearsing w- with the whole group, there's mm-hmm. an audience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, you know, you just take a deep breath and make your entrance, <laughs> yep. you know? I was going to say that it all sounds terrifying to me. <laughs> okay, Mark, we don't have very much time left, so I want two things from you. I want to make sure we uh, give everybody dates where they can get tickets, but can you first just tell me what do you hope people will come away with this year? That they would know that regardless of what they're facing at any given time in their life, that they're not alone. Mm-hmm. God is with them by their side actively and that there's a reason and purpose for their life and for what they're going through. Um, God makes good out of all things. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, he took Joseph from the high of, she said yes, <laughs> Jeannie said yes, <laughs> to the low of, uh, can you imagine his fiance saying, uh, I'm pregnant. Right. And he knows it's not him. Right. Uh, to the high of, wow, the angel said there's more to this, to we've got to go to Bethlehem, and she's pregnant. And then, oh, we made it to, oh my gosh, I have no place for my pregnant wife to deliver our Mm -hmm. baby. And these highs and lows are extraordinary. And at the end of the story, don't forget the incarnation story, the birth story. The last thing I have to do is flee in the middle of the night to go to Egypt. Mm -hmm. So these highs and lows are what we can all relate to today. Um, But we journey in faith because we know God has all of this in his hands. And there's a powerful story of salvation in all this for each of us. Yeah. Well, it it sounds like a really good um, production this year. Looking forward to it. I know a lot of people are really looking forward to it. So, Mark, where can we get tickets? When are the shows? Can you give us all the information? There's six concerts, December 15th through the 18th. So that's Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights at 7.30 p.m., a matinee at 2 p.m. on Saturday okay. the 17th, and a 1 p.m. matinee. I'm sorry, I got this. Which one? One, one o'clock matinee <laughs> on Saturday the 17th, and a 2 o'clock matinee on the That's 18th Sunday. on Sunday. Okay. And tickets are available uh, at all the Sioux Falls area high V stores. You can get them online at ccfesd, ccfesd.org. Mm-hmm. Actually, if you Google Christmas at the Cathedral, oh, yeah. it's going to come up. Yes. And you yes. can go online, you can purchase tickets. It does sell out, but it's not sold out at this point. Yes. So uh, if you'd like to come, I encourage you to come. If for some reason you felt like the cathedral, it's, maybe you're not Catholic, I have no idea why you wouldn't feel like you're welcome. Just know that you're welcome. Yeah. And uh, we hope you'd give yourself this opportunity to give yourself a present. Um, thanks to our sponsors, all the money goes to two beacons of hope, mm, yes. endowments for the ongoing care and maintenance of the cathedral and also the ongoing ongoing care and maintenance of the Bishop Dudley Hospitality right, House. Right. Thanks for adding that. I forgot to say that Absolutely. earlier. So, all right. Thank you guys very much for being here. I really appreciate it. I hope the rehearsals go well and it's not too terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I really yeah, encourage everyone to, even if someone tells you it's sold out, go check anyway. Check go out. online mm-hmm. and check to see if there's still tickets because I often hear that and sometimes there are still tickets yeah. available. And so. Renee, be inspired because after the first time Joe went to the concert, look what happened. <laughs> well, so I am not an actor. I am not an actor, Mark. You do not want me. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you. All right. If you haven't found us yet on social media, you can find us at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at YouTube at SF Diocese Anytime. You can also find us at sfcatholic.org, the diocesan website. That's it for us today. Hope you'll join us again next week for more Catholic Views.